Whenever we are in a public place, one of my favorite things to do is observing people. My kids sometimes get embarrassed and they'll ask me to stop staring at people. Recently I visited a government office and I had the opportunity to do the favorite thing I wanted to do. That was observing kids, especially toddlers. I was observing toddlers between the ages 3 to 6 and I just sat there thinking Are we raising little creatures who cannot control their emotions? What led me to think so? Keep listening as we talk more about this. Hello and welcome to the Arpana Saladi podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for coming here again. If this is your first time, don't forget to check out our other episodes. Also, please do consider checking our videos on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. hope you will find them helpful for your christian walk now i was observing kids of age groups between 3 to 6 and while i was sitting there in the government office and i had ample amount of time on my hand i was able to make out that the children are unable to control their emotions instead they are controlling their parents for example there was this little boy who was sitting in the other row with his mom and he was ripping the place with his tantrums he said he wanted a chocolate cake so his mom went and bought him a chocolate cake he ate it now i don't want to explain how he ate it and then he started screaming running around shouting at his mom pulling his pants hitting her so to distract him his mom went and bought him a huge chocolate bar even before he asked for it i have observed that boredom is making people go crazy but while we were little boredom was a part of our lives while we were growing up and that is how we used to come up with creative games but now parents have become entertainers and kids are the play writers <laughs> once the kid gets bored his emotions just go out of control he goes all bonkers even while we are driving on the road i don't know how many of you have observed but road rage has become so common these days people are so furious even if someone just honks at you or you park the car in someone's place all hell is going to break loose for the parking spot there have been cases reported that people in the apartments killed each other over fight over a parking space and suicides because A father didn't buy a smartphone for her. Killings over simple things. Father throwing the infant from the balcony just because he had a fight or an argument with his wife. When you listen to all this, don't you just sit thinking what's wrong with us human beings? Where are we going? I was struck by the same thought the other day and it left me wondering that this generation and we in the times that we are living emotions rule there's no room for logic there's no room for thinking there is no room for stopping and pondering over something if we are angry that is to an extreme if we love that's also an extreme if we hate that's going to an extreme everything in our times be it positive feelings or negative ones they are extreme facts and emotions both have become equal in our world today thought and emotion are on the same plane we do not rely on information for rational thinking anymore instead we draw conclusions over how we feel about things this present gen z especially has been called the most depressed generation with the least positive outlook and diminished emotional and social well-being one of the forbes magazine says they have more unmet social needs than any other generation the statistics for their behavioral health issues mental and substance disorders are alarming and they are two or three times more likely to contemplate or attempt suicide and this is the most shocking part the suicide rate amongst indian youth is the highest in the world 
I was just taken aback when I read those words. Emotions, they are what can trigger us to get mad at an instant, cry at the drop of a hat, fester unforgiveness in our hearts and drive us to succeed at all costs in life. But why are emotions driving us so crazy? One of the main factors is because we have become more digitalized. But for us Christians, what does the Bible say about our emotions? Is it possible to manage these emotions God has gifted us in these bodies? Yes, of course, the Bible talks about emotions. The Bible states that any emotion, be it happiness, sorrow, worry, Everything should be bought in prayer to God. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. And we need to allow our concerns and we need to bring our concerns to God and allow His peace and guidance to come to us. Basically, it is conveyed that emotions and feelings can sometimes warp our senses of right and wrong or completely change them to where innocent people get hurt or we are pushed further away from the loving hand of God. Especially during arguments, when situations escalate or sometimes when you lose your temper. There are so many other places where you can, I'm sure, relate with me that we lose ourselves so much that we forget or lose our senses into thinking what is the right thing to do or what is the wrong thing to do. Psychologists say that our emotions are tied to what we desire or need. And when we feel we may not get those desires and needs fulfilled, it is then that we tend to act in ways that may or may not show us in the best light. However, not all emotions are bad. Some can be used to help others, especially when it comes to Furthering God's kingdom. What do we do about our positive emotions? Most of us will recognize that one of the main scriptures to characterize positive emotions can be found in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, right? Listing positive behavior such as love, kindness, gentleness, joy as fruits of the spirit. The verses are situated in a chapter that states those who operate by flesh which is jealousy, outbursts of wrath, murders, which is like basically anger. And goes on to say that people with all these kind of stuff will not inherit the kingdom of God. The fruits are what we should have inside that show the Holy Spirit in us while making life easier for those around us. Colossians 3, 12 to 14 also expounds on the need for Christians to wear, literally wear, put on, tender mercies and meekness every day, forgiving and dealing with others every day and loving everyone as Jesus has done for us. God also prompts us to have courage in face of fear, encouraging his faithful follower Joshua. God said, be strong and courageous. He said, don't be afraid for God will be with you. I will be with you in every situation. Fear is a common feeling that can hold our emotions hostage, which is why fear is discussed several times in biblical texts. Fear might not be literally like fear of ghosts or fear of the dark. No, we might be having fear in a mask where you are scared that the person is not going to love you so much or your child is not going to respect you so much. All these kinds of things are also fears in our lives. But the only fear we should exercise is the fear of God. Let's come to negative emotions. The simple truth when it comes to negative emotions is that they are emotions that keep us from enjoying the blessings and the love of God. And negative emotions can damage the small miracles God gives us each day and blind us from the true paths of Christian walk that we are on. Like we spoke earlier, God commanded Joshua not to be afraid because fear is one of the strongest negative emotions human beings can ever have. And fear can push us to lash out to anger. You know, we might jump into situations that are not healthy, like Moses spoke of the 
paralyzing fear when he reprimanded the Israelites for the land God had provided for them, telling them not to be fearful or discouraged because this land was a gift to them from God. Anger is another emotion that can lead us to make poor decisions that not only hurt ourselves, but also our loved ones and even strangers. I was a very short-tempered person. I really was. We also see in the Bible the anger of Balaam, right? He pushed the donkey who was laying down in respect to an angel of the Lord. Anger is another kind of negative emotion which makes you lose your senses and hurts us and the people around us. Another negative emotion that we exhibit as human beings is worry and anxiety, which is again connected to fear. So do you see this cycle? Jesus teaches us that it is so silly to worry because he just gives a very, very beautiful and simple example that how flowers and birds don't worry about their protection or their meals and that we should also not worry about our needs being met. Worry demonstrates to God that we doubt his love. I have told this so many times and I'm telling this again that worry demonstrates to God that we doubt his love and provision for us, which only causes more negative emotions to take over our judgment and cloud God's still small voice in our lives. Our emotions, like our minds and bodies, are influenced greatly by the fall of mankind into sin. In other words, our emotions are tainted by our sinful nature and that is why we need controlling. The Bible tells us we are to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, not by our emotions. If we recognize our emotions and bring them to God, we can then submit our hearts to Him and allow Him to do His work in our hearts and direct our actions. At times, this may seem God simply confronts us, reassures us and reminds us that we need not fear. Other times, he may prompt us to forgive or to ask for forgiveness. I feel the Psalms, especially in the Bible, are an excellent example of managing emotions and bringing our emotions to God because we see in the Psalms that people are depressed, they are sad, they are happy, they are angry, they bring their grievances to God. Now, all these Psalms, most of them are filled with raw emotions, but Emotion is poured out to God in an attempt to seek His truth and His righteousness. So allowing our emotions to control us is not godly. Denying or vilifying our emotions is not godly either. But bringing our emotions to God and we being under the guidance and control of God the Holy Spirit is biblical. Because we are transformed through the renewal of our minds and the power of the Holy Spirit, the one who produces in us self-control, is living in us. So we need daily input of scriptural principles and desire to grow in the knowledge of God. And when we spend time meditating on God's attributes, definitely our emotions will be in our control and we will be led to emotional maturity. This is so true in my life and I am sure that most of you agree with me. But let us be patient in practicing the same thing over and over again and not letting our emotions overtake us. Proverbs 16.32 says, Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. So let us teach this to ourselves and let us teach this to our children and the people around us. The world may be going haywire, doing what they feel like. But we are people who will be led by God the Holy Spirit and we are rock solid because our foundation is the truth and that is the truth of the Word of God. Here is an exercise for you. After listening to this podcast, I want you to make a list of emotions from the Bible and see and find out what are the lessons we can learn out of these people's lives when they were confronted with the strongest of emotions. For example, anger. Cain reacted in a way where he murdered his brother. If it is lust, David could not control himself. If it's greed, 
ate him could not control himself instead he robbed something so these are just examples but i will hope you will do this exercise and this will help you see what you should be doing what you should not be doing because bible is ultimately our guide and our compass for life and hope this will help you and me nurture our emotions better and when we bring our every thought captive into god's presence he is going to make us and mold us into the conformity of jesus christ thank you so much for listening till now you were listening to arpna saladi and this is the arpna saladi podcast i will see you all next week bye bye take care